Um, gone West, that was the, to, to, if you were a young person and exciting, you wanted to be where the action was out West. So the folks that lived here were John and Alvira Ziegler and their five children. Actually, John wasn't here at the time of the battle because, like most men, he was away serving in the Union Army. So that left Alvira, like most women, here with this great big farm to take care of all by herself. And so I'm sure that was a real hardship for the Civil War women that were left behind. Well, we don't know whether Alvira and the kids hid in the crawl space of the basement for the three days uh, during the battle, which a lot of townspeople did. Or if she heard the Confederates were headed this way and said, okay, kids, start packing because we're moving out. We're going to go visit somebody else in another town, which a lot of townspeople did. We don't know which one she chose. <coughs> but I like to imagine, what would she have seen, what would she have heard had she stayed here for those three days of the battle? Well, the first thing she would have noticed, starting actually on June 30th, were Union troops coming, both uh, on this side of the house and on the back side of the house. She probably thought, oh boy, here's the Union troops that are going to save us from those pesky um, Confederates. They were all headed northwest of Gettysburg, which is where the fighting started the morning of July 1st on what is called Seminary Ridge. So, um, it's only about maybe a mile from here. It's close enough that Alvira would have been able to hear everything in the fighting. She would have been able to hear all this boom of the cannons and the crack of all those thousands of muskets and the beating of the drums, the blowing of the bugles, the men yelling orders. Can you imagine being in your own home, in your own apartment, and you have 160,000 people <coughs> outside in your yard and around your town doing the best they can to kill each other. I would be a basket case, <laughs> believe me. But uh, this is what the townspeople of Gettysburg went through. Well, if Elvira came up on the afternoon of July 1st, came up from her basement and looked out these very same windows, she would have seen this, uh, this Union soldiers that she saw in the morning, this time they're going back the way they came, and they're running. They are retreating. Not a good thing to see. And that's because the Confederates pushed the Union back, 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 right through the streets of Gettysburg. The fighting actually took place in the streets. When the Union got back as far as this hill, right across from the Dobbinhouse, what is now the National Cemetery? I can't tell you a whole lot about all the different generals and the flanks and everything with the battle, but I do know that if you're an army, you want to hold high ground. That's good. And so when the Union got to this hill, they stopped and they dug in. You go up on Cemetery Ridge, it's called. Today, you can actually see the um, uh, earthworks that the soldiers built. So it ends up the evening of July 1st, you've got the Union Army up here on the hill, got the Confederate Army occupying the whole town of Gettysburg. And the Confederates were really smart. They took their best shots, their sharpshooters, and they said, go up into the attics of the houses all along the edge of town, which they did. And they started picking off those soldiers that were digging up on that hill. Well, this made the Union angry, and so the, uh, some boys from Ohio that were camped over here, they came into the Dobbin house. We have a little window in our attic. And they actually went into the rafters of the Dobbin barn. They started shooting back at the Confederates. This made the Confederates angry. So they snuck into the Dobbin house and they actually captured all the Union soldiers that were in this house. We don't know if that means they got into one of those southern prisons or not. But that was just skirmishing, really, just small stuff. Most of the fighting on July 2nd and 3rd took place just south of the Dobbin House. You might have heard of uh, the Wheat Field, the Peach Orchard, Devil's Den, Pickett's Charge, all of that, again, only within a mile or so of the Dobbin House. So Alvira would have been able to hear everything that was going on. And 